Servus everyone and welcome to a new video. Some time ago I started the series about the Asus P55 T2 P4. In the first video of this series I mentioned that I would like to try out an AMD K62 in this motherboard. If you're interested, have a look at this video. But now it's finally time to try this out. In all videos I have done so far, I have used revision 2.3 of this motherboard. For the AMD K6 however, we need to use a later revision. I will use revision 3.1, because it supports two separate voltages. Initial CPUs for the Socket 5 and Socket 7 platform operated with a single voltage of around 3.3 volts. Newer developments in the mobile segment however required a reduction in power consumption. Intel introduced the voltage reduction technology with the Mobile Pentium MMX series. To be backwards compatible with existing chipsets, bus logic, memory and other components, a dual voltage was introduced. The I.O. circuitry remained at 3.3 volts, while the CPU core on the other hand ran at a reduced voltage of below 3.3 volts. This technology also appeared later in desktop processors, such as the Pentium MMX that used 2.8 volts to power the core. Motherboard manufacturers needed to implement a second voltage rail to support those new CPUs, while the rest of the circuitry remained unchanged. The Asus P55 T2 P4 in revision 2.3 does not support split voltages. However, in revision 3.1, voltages for the CPU core can be adjusted between 3.5 and 2.5 volts. So what benefits do we gain from lowering the core voltage? An obvious advantage is less power consumption. A second benefit is that less heat is produced. And finally, a cooler processor that consumes less power can run with higher clock rates. The Asus P55 T2 P4 is quite old and most CPU configurations have to be made using jumpers. To manually configure a CPU, we need to pay attention to the three main configuration options. Bus speed, clock ratio, but most importantly, to the CPU voltage. This board detects single and dual voltage CPUs automatically. Since the AMD K62 is a dual voltage CPU, I will focus on the configuration of this type of CPU only. Here is the voltage configuration of the Asus P55 T2 P4. Without any jumpers set, the board supplies 3.3 volts. This setting should only be used when using a single voltage CPU. For dual voltage CPUs, we get four options. A voltage can be selected by shorting the two pins with a jumper. For 2.9 volts, a jumper has to be placed here. For 2.8 volts, we have to short these two pins. And for 2.7 volts, we have to short these two pins. And finally, 2.5 volts is configured when these two pins are shorted. But wait! The AMD K62's imprint shows that it requires a voltage of 2.2 volts. There is no such setting to make the motherboard supply 2.2 volts to the CPU. Or is there? Well, the documented voltages on this board reach only down to 2.5 volts. But as we will see, there are many undocumented features on this board that allow, among other things, to set the core voltage as low as 1.86 volts. By shorting four pins simultaneously, we can achieve voltages that are not documented. For instance, to achieve 2.4 volts, we have to short the pins of 2.7 and 2.8 volts. For 2.3 volts, we have to short 2.8 and 2.5 volts. And for 2.2 volts, we have to short 2.7 volts and 2.5 volts. This is the stock voltage for the AMD K62 but we can go even lower. By adding a third jumper and shorting 2.8, 2.7 and 2.5, the motherboard will deliver 2.1 volts to the CPU. And finally, adding even another jumper and shorting 2.9 volts additionally, we can reach 2.0 volts. There are even more possible combinations, which are shown in this list, but I have not tested them. There is another version of this revision available that replaces the reserved voltage with 3.2 volts. The output voltages differ from the boards that are not 3.2 volts ready. I just include both tables for completeness sake. Now it's time to configure the board and run some benchmarks. I'm configuring the stock voltage of the AMD K62 at 2.2 volts. 
But before I run the benchmarks, I want to verify that the motherboard is sending the correct voltage to the CPU. To do so, I can measure the voltage between JP17 and ground. The fan connector has two ground pins on either side. First I want to test the 2.2 volts configuration. And here we get around 2.25 volts. Next up is the 2.1 volts configuration. The CPU will still work with this voltage, but it is slightly undervolted. And here we get around 2.12 volts. We can continue to push the voltage even lower. Let's test the 2 volts configuration. And here we get around 2.03 volts. Now it's finally time to boot up the system. This motherboard is running the BIOS version 0109. And look at that, it doesn't detect the AMD K62. Instead I get a 486DXS with 75 MHz. Let's run a few benchmarks. Speedsys detects the correct model of the processor, but let's benchmark the system anyway and compare it with the results after a BIOS upgrade. And here we go, the AMD K62 is detected. At the moment, the CPU is only running at 233 MHz. This is because the Asus P55 T2 P4 only supports a multiplier up to 3.5. In a future video, I will overcome this limitation and hopefully will be able to run an AMD K62 with 450 MHz. And here is the comparison between before and after the BIOS upgrade. The CPU score doesn't seem to be affected. However, once we look at the level 1 cache benchmarks, we can see a significant improvement in the level 1 write performance. The level 2 cache also benefits from the BIOS upgrade. Although it is not as significant as the level 1 cache, it still tripled its write performance. And also the memory benchmarks show an improvement in the overall performance. Here in the MMX benchmarks for the memory there is one outlier which I cannot explain. Hopefully I will find an answer why the write performance was better before the BIOS upgrade. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.